Okay. So going ahead with our next topic, implementing path control. Let me show you all the concepts we are going to see in this topic. So path control concepts. Then offset list is the theory part. IPSLA. We have the theory, but we will also see if we can make out some practicals on that. And yes, policy based routing, we have to do practicals. So, concept of path control. Now, path control is controlling the path that traffic takes to a network when there are multiple paths, redundancies, correct? Like for example, going from one over the source to one destination, the traffic can go via one route and come in via some other route. Remember, VGP, we did something like that. So, when there are redundant paths, we can have path uh, controlling concepts, asymmetric paths. Then three tools are like offset list, uh, IPSLA, that's called as Cisco Service Order Agreements, and your policy based routing, PBM. Do not even discuss all, okay? Now, when an industry in the network uh, includes redundancy, backup, some consideration has to be included, like resiliency, that is, the ability to maintain an acceptable level of service when faults occur. And ability to maintain an acceptable level of service. So when fault occurs, what should be taken? What should be the next part to be taken? So redundancy does not guarantee resiliency, correct? Redundancy means backup part doesn't show like it is resilient. What uh, action you should take? What level of service should the fault when occurs? So what we can decide on that, okay? So redundancy links does not automatically result in a backup link being used as a primary link first. Remember like, if I got a backup link, if I got two static routes, okay? Uh, if they are having load balancing, that's okay. But if I do floating static routes, remember, like, I want to think like I want to have one primary link. So remember, in floating static routes, you can have one as a primary and one as a backup. So the primary goes, the backup should go the, come up automatically. But image, imagine uh, between two routers, there is a switch, and the port never goes down. See, the router R2, uh, now for example, if I show you two routers, uh, let me make a topology of packet tracer. Now see, uh, like for example, uh, this is the router over here, the other router over here, okay, and in between I just put one single switch, just for your understanding, okay. Now the connectivity is something like this, this both are my ISPs, okay, and if, uh, okay, he's going to do this router over here, that's good, then this guy, from here to here, and from here, I'm just putting some any wrong cables, so just pay attention. Don't uh, go with the cable. See, if this link goes down, I will get an update that this primary link has gone down, correct? Oh, I'm not just the primary, but this link has gone down. But within both of us, there is a switch. So between me and the switch port is going to be up, and this switch and this port is going to be up, correct? So if this link goes down, can this switch tell me that this link has gone down? I don't have any option to make out, correct? So how to control that? And I got putting, even if in this scenario, I got putting static routes, this is my primary path and this is my backup path. The primary path router goes down. How can this guy come up? He has no idea, correct? So, how to trace this? How to trace this path? So, that all things will be done in IPSL. Getting? So, it's a very, I think it's a very simple scenario I explained to you. So, redundant links does not automatically result in the backup link being used as a primary link, correct? If it fails. Availability, like the time required for the routing protocol to learn about the backup path when a primary link fails in the convergence time. So again, like EIGRP, you know, we have got, in EIGRP concept, we have got a, like we can have a backup path, correct? So we see practically like one path goes down, other comes up automatically from the body table to the routing table. So fast converging routing protocols and tuning parameters. Adaptability, the ability of the network to adapt to the changing conditions. How much quickly you can you adapt to the new network changes? Example. A uh, redundant path, uh, a redundant path could be activated when the primary path becomes congested, not only when it fails. So backup path I can use also when there is a huge traffic jam on my network. Yes. So my backup should get adapted to this feature. Performance: improve network performance by tuning routers to load share across multiple things. Of course, load balancing, making more beneficial of user bandwidth, and support for network and application services like more advanced path control solutions involve like adjusting the packets like QoS, for your service, security. So these are some basic things which you can do in your network. Now, predictability means what? You need to have the path control solution be deterministic and predictable. Like if traffic is bad direction by nature, going in one direction, coming in one direction, you consider both upstream and downstream traffic, correct? Then asymmetric traffic. Asymmetric means the both links are not of same, are equal cost. Traffic that flows in one direction and comes in another direction, opposite direction, correct? That's called asymmetric. 
So not an negative track, but more starting protocols that are no specific tools to control tra traffic direction. See, if you see IG protocols, they don't have any way to control this traffic. Right? When we saw EIG, remember? We used to see the packet should go by one road and come to another route. We saw this so many times, correct? So they don't have any tools to control these things, correct? BGP also has got sort of tools like attributes that to control traffic in both directions that we saw. MED values, local preference, weight, mm -hmm. all this stuff. And path control tools. Now, a good design explanation, right? Like summarizable addressable blocks. Now, see here. Like if I'm summarizing these networks over here together like this, okay? Classless interdependent routing, CIDR aggregation that align with the physical topology. Have you know summarization? After okay. summarization and manual summarization, we are done. So, this guy will summarize this as 10 slash 8. And here, summarize this as 10 slash 8, correct? Or we can make it 10.1.80, something like that. So, 10.8 summary is addressed from both the routers, correct? Can you see? It is summarizing. So, more specific router for 10.1.80 slash 24 is advertised from the right hand router, providing the direct access to the subnets, correct? That is the most specific route, correct? Instead of sending as a class full summarization, we can send this one, correct? So, visiting traffic flows are like deterministic. You have to determine the path, and more recently, if one path fails, the other path should automatically be used. There is no resiliency. So then characteristics like VIGRP and OSP we know very well now, route marking, like you know tags, we can give tags, remember? Tags we can assign like the packet coming in, so we will have this tag, and we are going, in, there are two routes, we will do routing protocols. Redistribution and other routing protocol characteristics, like the capabilities of the routing protocol can use help implement a path control like metrics, EI, then route maps, correct? We use route maps and redistribution points. Filtering, next stop, search command, remember? Can we set for all routers under various conditions, like even next stop also can be defined. Our summarization can be taken effect in OSTF. We can do summarization only on ABR and ASBR. EIGRP we can do it on any other routers. Any equal cost load balancing is that in EIGRP versus not that in OSPF. Correct? Can we change for external routes this next stop attributes and this thing? So these are so many things we can play with EIGRP and OSPF. All the different characteristics like filtering also we saw. We saw next stop everything. A passive interface is also you learn. Correct? And other tools include like distributed list, we saw we saw prefix list also we work, we display the AD values, we can change the AD values, route map we saw, route tagging we saw. New things, offset list, Cisco IS, IP, SLA, and PBI, policy based routing. So let's see how these things are. Router convention command like it is used to increase incoming and outgoing metrics. That's what you see, offset list that we want to see now. I'll show you one more example of offset list from my CCI book. I'll show you that because it's a very good example. So offset lists are used only when distance related routing protocols are there. That means I can use offset list only with zip version 1 and zip version 2 and IGRP. Optionally can be implemented using an access list or per interface. So we can also implement offset list with your access list. So the, these are the syntax now. Okay, that's okay. Syntax we have to play right now. Offset list, access list number, standard or extended. Then in out where is going to be applied, incoming matrix, or uh, matrix and offset. Offset says a positive offset to be applied. The matrix for networks matching the access list. If the offset is zero, no action is taken. And the interface type. Now it's better I'll show you an example so you get a very clear idea of what offset list is actually. Okay, see an offset list that specifies the interface is considered to be an extended list and takes precedence over an offset list. That is not extended. Okay. Now see here, organization using RIP. And he is a service provider. An organization is using RIP and is connected to the internet router okay via edge routers 4 and 5 these are two edge routers so from r2 this is the one way this is one off so go by this route it is two offs correct mm -hmm. okay. now the metric between r2 and r5 is smaller than the metric between r2 and r4 so this is smaller metric correct means we can say 120 kbps and this is maybe 500 kbps so uh, we want r2 to prefer the route towards r4 via r4 towards the destination but you will not go rip you always see the hop counts correct so what will happen? An offset list can be used to accomplish this. How? See the command. R5, R2 will say router rip offset list 21 in serial 2 0 sub 0. What, what this means? It adds an offset of two more hops to the metric of routes done from interface serial 0 sub 0. Okay? They are permitted by access is 21. So any routes which are coming inside by R5, they will have one additional hops of 2. So now if you see 2 plus 1, 3 hops and why R4 is 2 hops. So which is the best one? So see, these subnets coming will have a, so access 21 will permit a specific set of routes, that's okay, run from R5, but other routers will be run, but this offset will not be applied. This offset will only apply to these routes, correct? So then the total, your, what is your metric, it's going to be 3, correct? 1 plus 2, 2 offs, it's showing 2 offs more. 
Now, let me show you a very good example. Now, I see IOS SLA will come over here, but give me one sec. So, this is the topology if you see here. Yeah? Now, the route matrix can be mapped with the offset list also. Now, this is the topology over here, we are running repo over here. Okay? Now, if you see, the common uh, command is there, that's okay. Now, the repo convention with the inboard offset, like uh, access list is written. Now, so let me show the topology. Is that always 10.33, 35, 30.25, over the secondary IP address of 10.33 or 75, 30.75 over here, same over here, uh, entire network is of 10.33, okay? Now what do you want? This access is one for me 10.33. 30 routes are coming from here, and see which router? Harness, this router, okay? Router reap, network, network, and see sending offset list of 1 in 2, serial 0. So sending a metric of 2 ops, and offset list 1 means access list 1, correct? So all routes going, okay, with this network. We will have a option list of 2, that means 2 ops more. So by default for Barney to come here, okay, if I go by this route, how many ops it is? 1, 2 ops, correct? 1 and 2 ops, but if I go by this route, it is only 1 op, correct? So we want Barney to reach here via these ops, this route, watch the name, as a serial. So who is going to send the updates to this route as, you know what? As what? Your 2 ops, so 2 ops more. So an access is written that identifies the route to submit this one. The signal of the list says that examine RIP advertisements coming from interface serial 0. Okay? From serial 0. So, what is serial 0? This one, correct? This one serial link. Okay? And for routes entering matching the address access 1, add 2 hops to the matrix. So, 2 more hops, correct? Getting? Okay? So, now when you go to Barney, again, Barney's router means this router. Okay, Barney over here. He says again the same thing router RIP offset list 5 into serial 0. So, add 2 hops to the all the access to C. This is my access 5, permit 10.33.32. The routes coming by this new network will have a 2 ops more. Now, these are two ways. These are doing via inbound offset list and inbound offset list, correct? Barney and Ernest. So, when you go to debug, you will say something like this. You will say 2 ops. Can you see? Now, let me show what is showing. See 3 ops. Can you see 10.33? Showing us 3 ops and is receiving routes the Ernest router. Okay? Is receiving routes of how much? 3 ops, correct? So when these guys want to reach there, then dot thirty-three dot. What is thirty-three dot? Something, na? No? What is ten dot thirty-three dot? Let me check. Uh, thirty-two dot zero. Oh, what it is? In this offset list, I am trying to show that this don't work come by this route, come by the other route. So see, if you see this practically, from Barney to reach Ernest. Okay, which is the best one? One of this route, correct? This is the serial link. I should I want this to come by this name. So I applied access offset dish over there saying that any routes coming by this route will have offset dish of two. So one of plus two, three ops. So Barney says okay if I go by this route it is three ops and for this route it is two ops. So I'll go by this route. That's what offset dish you want to convey actually. Got it? Okay, so now let's see IP SRS. IOS SRS, service level agreements. Now what does it mean? And this is like you know that this example which I showed you. How to track them, correct? The link is going down. That's something what you have to see over here. See, Cisco IOS IP SLA sends simulated data across the network and measures performance between multiple network locations or across multiple network paths. It sends simulated data. Means what? There is a ping, there is something, you will see this. You see, for that we have an IP SLA router. IP SLA router over here. So, see, major IP SLA responder. Same way, configure, correct. You will see this all one by one, all the traffic and all this. Stuff. So, the information collection collected includes data about response time. One way latency, how much delay it is, jitter, either inter packet delay variance over there, packet loss, voice quality scoring, network resource availability, how much it is. These are things you can get the performance application, application performance, server response time. So, these are things you can get via your IPSL. So, IPSL is a feature of Cisco IOS software, allows you to configure router to send synthetic data. Synthetic means, uh, you can, I don't say it's a duplicate frame, but it's something like, you know, like artificial traffic. Just to check, is my destination still there? So, this is my IP host, a host computer. The order that has been configured to respond. Okay? So, now see, this is a very good example. Now, uh, he has got two routes IP route and uh, load sharing. Both the routes I am using, correct? But how will I come to that my ISP is down? How will I come to that my, my ISP is down? How? I need two ISPs running NAT and load balancing. So, how will this go? I am using two static default routes. So, if there is a direct failure on the link of the one ISP, other link, still, the other link can still be used, correct? Now we want the infrastructure within one of the ISP fails and the link to that ISP remains up. The edge router would continue to use that link, the static default route would not be valid, correct? 
just what I showed you over here. Now they are saying that in somewhere over here there's something goes down. This link is still up, correct? Yes. So we can't make out the further part has gone down. So how to track them? Getting? Yes, so there are multiple solutions to this issue. Run a dynamic learning protocol with the ISP, BGP, something like that. But again, and an dynamic routing protocol and impractical for smaller branch office. You see, I'm not going on BGP with my office and ISP, correct? I got a single office, I should write on BGP. Hey, you know, again, why to use BGP? Why not to use BGP? And that's the thing because additional interaction, interaction with the integration with the ISP again, if I want to use protocols, so again, there is a drawback. Maybe the best solution for critical branch offices or those with large traffic volumes. For them it's good, they can use BGP, correct? To track your ISP is going up and down, correct? Or your ISP network is going down. Or we can use static routes or PBR, policy is routing, like make them subject to reachability test toward critical destinations, such as the DNS server with the ISP, right? Like we will keep a constant ping to DNS server? No, but constant ping is not, uh, not uh, recommended, correct? You will not able to keep a constant ping to the DNS server, but yes, I can send some some uh, traffic to DNS to just see the reply from him, correct? So, if the DNS server is in one of the ISP goes down or is unreachable, so we can make out that the study default towards the ISP should be removed, correct? Yeah, would be removed like that. Okay. So, this route should be removed. But again, why I should remove it? Let's keep floating study routes, correct? Let's keep it floating, otherwise. So, this reachable test can be performed using your Cisco IOS IP SLA. Okay. So, how to check this? I'll show you very soon. Frequently probe the DNS server. Send a tick tick messages. Static routes attached to the success of these probes. So now let's see how it goes. In the simplest, simplest form, IPSL verifies whether a network element is active and responsive, for, for example. Whether it is active and is responsive. So, IP address on the router interface, open DC port on a host. So, these are the mechanism it checks. Cisco IOS IPSL are also accessible using SNMP also. Simple network management protocol, but that also you can manage them. Okay, so it can be used by performance monitoring applications such as P, uh, P IPM, like Internet Network Performance Monitor. So that also I can use to monitor the networks and allows the router to receive alerts and performance drops below a specified level and when problems are corrected. So, but over here we require some extra hardware for SNMP drive, correct? We require one PC. But these thresholds can trigger additional events and actions. Okay. Let's see now how to work with IP SLA. Now, for SNMP, as I told you, we require one more thing. You should also understand what is SNMP. We can go on this side and get some more information. Now, see IP SLA operation. Now, for this operation, there is something like server and client content. iOS IP SLA measurements perform active monitoring by generating and analyzing traffic to major performance. Okay. So, what they do? How they work? Let's see. Now, see, this is a source and this is a destination, the IP server. Cisco IOS software responder and this is Cisco IOS software, IP SLS, we are will sending, okay? And this guy is going to respond to us. So between Cisco IOS software devices and I want to also analyze traffic between a Cisco IOS device and a host. So each of these is a different type of IP SLA operation. So how they work? See, if the IP SLA feature enabled, a router sends synthetic traffic to other device. It sends the artificial data. Now see, can you see something over here? I'll explain this entire stuff in a very few seconds. IP SLA responder is a component embedded in the destination Cisco device that allows the system to anticipate and respond to IP SLA request packets. Okay, responder is going to is the one who is going to send you a response. Okay. Okay. So now let's see how this connection goes. Okay. Yeah, it's almost something like three actually. See, the responder also provides accurate measurements without the need for dedicated probes. So only a Cisco IOS device can be a source for a destination IP SLA responder. So it requires a Cisco router only or Cisco switch. So all SLA probes are configured on the SLA source. Okay, source space of configure CLI or SNMP or source and probe package to the target. Okay. So now see the steps. IP SLA operation responder. The source and responder. So two routers I'm having. So how will they go? So very first, see this entire thing I am explaining in the next slide. Control phase and they are working for UDP port number 1967. Step 1. At the start of the control phase, he sends a control message like ask receiver to open port 2020. 
IPSLA sends so sends a control message with the configured IPSLA information to responder control port UDP 1967. Correct? IP source SLA sends a control message like with the configured IPSLA information to responder. So is the responder correct? And you should work on this port. So now for example, he is working on port number 9667. Control message includes the protocol, port number and duration of the operation. What is there in the control message? The protocol, port number and your duration. Okay? Yeah. Video port 2020 is used for the IPSL packet test packets. So you going to work on 2020. MD for the negation can also be used. Step 2. After the responder process the control message, he sends the responder. Sends an OK message back to the source. So this is on the port specified in the control message 2020 for a specific duration. What he has defined on that port, I will keep on listening. And the responder cannot process the control message if it has an error. Okay, that's normal. If the IP SLS source does not receive a response from the responder, it tries to retransmit the control message and will eventually time out if it does not receive a response. Getting okay. source, if it does not receive a response from the responder. It tries to re-transfer the control message, but eventually time out after some duration, if it doesn't re reply, okay? Then phase 3, step 3, sorry. Now, if the OK message is written, source IPSLA operation moves to a probing phase, now sending a artificial data. So, it sends one or more test packets to a responder to compute response time, sending test packet. The test messages are sent to port control port number 2020, as we have defined already. Step number 4 now, the responder escapes the test packets and responds to the time step information. Okay, stop listening. Okay, now this is okay, the C section books, that's okay. The responder disables the user specified port after he responds to the IP SLA measurement packets or when the specified time expires. Okay, that is going to stop the listening for that probe. So, the following steps are required to configure iOS IP SLA functionality. First, define the probes, then define one or more tracking objects, and then define the action on the tracking objects. Okay, now, let's see, I've got a commands over here, it's very awesome. Let's see, first, what is this? Define one or more probes. So see IP SLA monitor. Now we we'll see all these commands, okay, one by one. Then there are several SLA probes that can be used. So we'll focus on ICMP, like echo, ping messages. So see now. Then so first I will say IP SLA monitor operation number, then ICMP echo packet, which I'm going to send. Frequency and timeout. Like what is the frequency? Seconds. The user frequency seconds command to set the rate at which the specified IP SLA operation repeats. So after what time I should be sending a ping again? Okay. Then timeout. The second parameters in the number of seconds between the IPSL operation, the number of gap, gap, okay. Default 60 second. And use the optional timeout milliseconds command to set the amount of time a Cisco IPSL operation waits for a response from its Cisco packet. Okay, the timeout phase. And the recommended pack, uh, recommended to be based on the sum of both the maximum RTT values for the packets and the processing time of the IPSL operation. Okay, let's say sum of both. Okay, maximum time you have to wait actually. Now, configures the scheduling parameters for Cisco iOS display probes. See, IPSL schedule. It's lifetime or for so and so time. Correct? And step two, then track as a, as a track the object. Correct? Track the state of an iOS IPSL, such as the device is reachable or not. Delay, like what delay should be? Delay a specified period of time to delay communicating state changes of a track object. A delay can help alleviate the effort of flapping objects. Like, a link is going up and down, up and down. But with delay, I can maintain, okay. I wait for some time before meeting in, assuming that the link has gone down, the link has gone down. So third step, again, define the action and the static route is used to track the object. Now let's see the example. Now give me one sec. So this is the example over here. You can see customer A has a router R1. It's kind of through ISPs by R2 or and there are some routers inside the ISPs domain. These are networks which are reachable by these routes, okay. Customer A having multi homing to two ISPs, that's great. But is not using BGP with ISPs, but using static default routes. Okay, we are not using BGP. The two static default routes uh, with different AD values are configured, like floating static, static routes. Link to ISP1 is a primary, and uh, ISP2 is a backup. So see the command. Sorry, it's a floating static route, correct? Phi, can you see FA0 and slash phi, so that is a backup. The static default value having AD value of 1. The static default route with the lower AD value will be preferred and injected into the routing table. Now, however, if there is a problem with the ISP1 router or with this connectivity, the, it will swap to second traffic. Traffic swap to one second customer, uh, sorry, ISP2. 
Rubbing may get lost within the ISP also, correct? Now see, yeah. How? A solution to this issue is I Cisco IS IP as a function. If you say last, uh, see, if there's a problem with ISP1 router or with its connectivity toward the interface, but the interface to customer is still up. So all traffic from customer will go to ISP1 only, correct? But how will customer come know that there is a failure beyond the ISP is right? Correct, beyond the router. So for that we have SLS. So let's see how it goes. Configure the SLA. <coughs> Continuously check the reachable to a specific destination such as DNS server or forward edge router. Okay. IP or ISP's DNS server or any other specific destination where I can reach. And conditionally announce the default route announce it to a connector is verified. Okay. So see this awesome awesome this thing. See first probe. IP SLA monitor 11. 11 is your operation number. Type echo protocol IP ICMP echo. This is the destination and source interface. This one. Frequency of every 10 seconds. And IP is the monitor schedule. Schedule 11. This, this operation 11. Live forever start time now. This schedule forever. Start time is now. And then track 1. Okay. RTR1 receivability. And let me show I think there's a, they are given the explanation everything over here. Define the probe. Defines probe 11. IP is operation 11. Correct. Type echo means ICMP echoes are sent. And to destination. Okay. And with the source interface, this one. Frequency name is what? Schedule a candidate test to repeat after every 10 seconds. There are gap. IP SLA model schedule 11. Live forever start time now means define the start time of now and it's been continue forever. Correct? Then define a tracking object. Track 1 RTR 11 HFD. Specifies that object 1 is tracked. Next step. Link to be probe 11. Define the first step. The probe 1. Correct? So the HFD of that is tracked. So we are checking if it is reachable or not. That is having a track of that. Okay, then define an action based on the status of the tracking object IP route FS0 0 track 1. Correct? So, conditionally announce the default route out FS0 0 with an ID value of how much 2. Okay, could have left it as a default 1, but if the result of tracking object 1 is 2, the probe is successful. Okay, so to summarize 10. Dot, if 10.1 10 is reachable, a study default route via FS0 0 with an ID value of 2 is ensured in the routing table. Okay. This is for the primary path. Now what about backup path? Backup path C. IPSA model 22. Same type protocol, ICMP, echo. Keep on pinging this guy. Okay. Via this source, FS0 search 1. Frequency 10. Then IPSA model schedule 22. Lifetime forever. Track 2. RTR 22 reachability. And see what he says. IP route, if it's there, seeing the ideology of 3. Same thing. You find the probe, ICMP, destination. That's okay. Okay. We know these things. Then tracking the object, yes. Specify the object 2 is tracked. Okay. And then link to probe 22. So the reachability of this is tracked. And action conditionally announces that the default route exit via FS01 with the ideal of 3. If the result of a tracking object 1 is true, it is probably successful. Now to summarize again, if it is reachable, a static default route via FS01 with an ideal of 3 is offered in the routing table. Now there are two routes. One is via R2, one is via R3. Correct? So R2 is having an ideal of 2 and R3 is having an ideal of 3. See, so which is the best one? Of course, because this default route has a higher ID value, the path via R2 is available and this path will be kept in the backup path. Okay. So this is how you are configured to do on your router for IPSL. Okay. Simple it is. Concept is simple. Okay. So if 10.1 is, is reachable, a static default route via R2 will be an ID value of 2 is installed in the routing table. Okay. And if this is reachable, a static default value the ID value of 3 is available to the routing table as a backup path, but it is not showing your routing table. Once that goes down, then it will show your routing table. One more example, we have DNS reachability. Okay, this uh, in this I was picking these two guys, correct? Oh, yeah, yeah. Now DNS. So I can have like DNS server C. Okay, ISP1, ISP2. Okay, and running EIJT. R3 represents a branch of which connected to two ISPs. Okay, so we use Cisco IOS IP SLA to track the reachability of the DNS servers. So see, there are two DNS servers to and tie the results to static default routes on R3. The same thing, so if the DNS server fails, we will not get reply, correct? The probe fails and the static default route of the DNS server will be removed. And we use the other one. Our traffic will be reordered towards the other ISP. So see the commands. Okay, first step one, they are checking reachability. Ping, ping. So it's reachable, very fine. Okay. Then, configure iOS IP SLA. See, IP SLA monitor 99. So this one. Type echo protocol, okay. Echo this one frequency 10 schedule lifetime forever. Same way for, for one more 100 
for this route correct same things okay so this thing we know very well now ips remodel creates the icmp probe on r3 for the first dns server operation number 99 is locally significant only to the router there is the operation number then type echo send a type uh, your ping of every 10 seconds a probe is scheduled to be lifetime forever start time now and we similarly create a second probe of 100 okay then do show ip sra model configuration now when we verify these things what you can see verify with the show ip sra model command to so see type of operation to perform is echo and target is this one 8.1 can you see okay then waiting a frequency of every 10 seconds can you see and start time already passed next schedule start time this is already passed correct this is how it is going then show ip sra model statistics what you can see over here it displays the number of successes and failures and the results of latest operation so see here index 99 operation number 99 okay then latest operation written code okay that is the success 16 times till now number of successes failure was zero and last operation was okay result okay last written code okay the index number 100 again everything was fine success 15 no failures and okay everything is okay currently everything is going fine and the command see now track 1 rti 99 is pretty delay down 10 up to now what is delay means see configure tracking object the first tracking object is tied to IPS object 99 okay the first one tracking then 10 seconds of down delay and 1 second of up delay means what if the DNS server fails momentarily and comes back up within 10 seconds there is no impact got it down by 10 seconds up with y1 so 1 second of up delay and 5 convey static default same way correct track 1 and track 2 so IP route creates a static default route via this router it appears or disappears depending on the success or failure of the IPSLS Okay, getting? So, I have a question. DNA is a server. Yeah. That's a good question. DNA is a server. IP is a server. It's not able to resolve the host name. Simple. It's not able to resolve the host name. Host name is not able to resolve. So, why do we check with the DNA server? Because it's not the host name. 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 That's why some problem with your Consider we can say operating system like because this is not an issue actually network. First time result now the means the concept of DNS only. So to check with the DNS server. Actually, IP address one is the same network. Okay. IP address same network, right? Hmm hmm hmm. And those are two kinds of individual route way way. Correct. 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 IP help is just for your DNS server, that's it, yeah. It's just IP help is just like a helping hand to your between routers, different different networks actually. But network means that you have two different networks, network related to your network. I'll show you first IP help address, how it works, then we'll work on that. Okay? No, IP help is used, I'll tell you, 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 See when I use help IP helper address, like for example, now this is my topology. Now these are two routers, okay? For example, uh, let me see, let me make something different. Okay, these are my two routers over here. Okay, when I use IP helper, see, and uh, he is acting as a DSCP server. I got PCs over here, over here, and over here, okay? And this guy is connected to this guy. So he is going to request an IP from this DSCP server. Okay. Now, again, this guy is over here. Now, again, he wants IP from the same DSCP, DSCP server. But router never sends a broadcast, correct? Because DSCP is a broadcast. So that time I will use IP help address on this interface. IP help address will send my broadcast as unicast to this router. And then from this router, I get IP address over here. Okay, that's the concept. So I show this practical also to you. Now what you are saying, I am not getting out of the DNS server, like you are saying two routers, IP helper, how you have used it, I need to see. Okay, that is the concept of IP helper address, I think, used for DSCP request. Okay, so I will show you this practically, most of you on the day, day before, okay, let's do this one, on Friday. I will show the practical of IP helper also. Okay, so after this, so IP route creates a static route and that appears or disappears upon the success of failure. I reference the tracking object 1, which reference IP as a operation 99. So, this is what we saw. So IP route C, the command. There are two routes, correct? Both are working. So we'll examine the static routes in the IP routing table. And the output confirms that both static routes currently appear in the routing table, correct? Why? Because both are having the same. We are not given any different edge values, correct? So 
So whenever the link goes down, see debug IP route. Verify the operation. When I try to update, so see when it happening on our three, deleting route can you see automatically. No routes to this guy. We just shut down the DNS server over here and it gets out down automatically. So no need to keep it. See, delete submit route. Can you see here? Correct? Deleted, deleted, deleted. Getting? So this is how it goes, correct? Now doing same thing via floating static routes. So see type protocol, that's okay. See now here I again track to now the ERP route to is 10.8.2 is immediately deleted and there are no routes to 10.0.8.2. Okay, this is the configuration which we have done, correct? So after this, so this is the object we are tracking with the track 2 command, correct? Track 1 is for that 99 one, operation 99. So it tracks reachability to IPS object 100, which is an ICMP echo. So after about 10 seconds, the value specified in the delay command, a static value route is that is R2 is deleted, correct? So after 10 seconds, that route automatically gets erased. Okay. So show IP SL statistics. Can you see here? Index 100. So it shows the number of successes and the failures. And see the connection RDD. It's showing no connection, busy and timeout. The latest written code is timeout. So there is no one there to reply. The NS server is down. And then which you saw the number of failures. And there are ICMP failures. Can you see? Okay. Getting? Yes. Then same way if I talk about 99. The 99 is shown in your static routing table. Can you see? Only one route remains. Okay. Now, if you are doing debug, the continuity is restored. See again, added route, static route in your routing table. Can you see? Remember this we saw last time also, like right? if you add IP address, remove IP address, something similar. Okay. So, we again see there are two static routes again. Whole container has been restored. Now, this is some awesome practicals you can practical for IPS. Right? Okay. So, any queries over here? Any routes? Okay. So this is also third example, third type of way, but we don't follow this one. It's very you know very critical. DNS server and this one like that. To measure difference between the time taken to send a DNS request. Okay. So there is one more way. But that was about IP yesterday. You can go on this more see. You can go on solar winds also. Like so you know you are TFTP server, solar winds. So you can get some more videos on that to see how it goes. Okay. Some more stuff. So radio Cisco iOS IP SLS. Okay. Now, give me a small break. Now going ahead with PBR, policy based routing, awesome topic again that you will see practically. Now this example again taken from your CCI book of Jeff Doyle. Now let normally forward packets by examining the destination IP address, correct? In policy based routing, again do it on the base of a source address. So see, again how to do? They find the best path in the routing table, correct? And they, so on the base of destination the packets are forwarded. Now using PBR, you can implement policies that selectively cause packets to take different paths based on source address, protocol types, and application types. So I can define how on the source, based of source, I can define what traffic they should go, what traffic uh, they should travel. So PBR overrides the router's normal routing procedure. So PBR is also applied to incoming packets. But let's see, we have got awesome explanation, awesome this example over here from the Jeff Doll book. So PBR also provides a mechanism to mark packets with three different types of services like TOS, okay, and can be used in conjunction with queuing techniques like all QoS techniques, so that a certain kind of traffic can receive preferential services. Okay, we'll see now how it goes. Now what I'm saying: source-based transit provider selection. ISPs and other organizations can use PBR to route traffic originating from different sets of users to different internet connections across policy routers. Later in BGP, we we'll see that. So let's like see, if you talk about this one, this class 1, class 2, class C, they are all poly QoS concepts, policy, QoS, okay, quality of service. So QoS, what I just told you, so you can provide QoS to differentiate traffic by setting the toss values in the IP packet header in routers and then using queue mechanisms to prioritize, prioritize the traffic, like what packet should we give, what type of treatment, okay. This is all QoS topic, very, very vast again, very awesome topic QoS. So see, packets coming from here, like first two packets will have this kind of service. See the bandwidth what they will be using 32 class 3 weight is 64 packet 3 will have a class 2 service bandwidth 120 they will be using and class 4 will also and so thing and see again this for wf weighted pair queen dispatch how they will be going the first packet while well, coming inside the first packet going will be 3 then 4 higher weight then 1 and 2 so this is how we have your packets with flow outside your router so this mechanism is awesome like cordial service so like four guys come into my come into the class or you can say come into the train compartment so i will give them a service like okay you first two will sit on their first two seats more preference more preference and you can say more good service uh, where they can sit in a business class they can sit in economic class like that okay then cost saving yes can direct the bulk traffic associated with a specific activity 
You use a higher bandwidth, high cost link for a short time and you continue basic connectivity over a lower bandwidth, low cost link for intended bandwidth, right? All video and voice traffic will go via higher bandwidth and all the download will flow via lower bandwidth. That also you can define. And load sharing, yes. In addition to dynamic load sharing capabilities, managers can implement policies to distribute traffic among multiple paths. So, load balancing, also you can do it, okay? So now route maps we know very well, we have seen that match and set commands, remember we did lots of practice of that. Match, the condition match, this action to be taken, set and all, okay. The big difference between route maps and ACL side. Route map can modify the packet or route using set commands. So we see that, we can modify the packet, correct? You know, we can set a new local preference or we can say attributes. These things I'm not going to say again, we are done already. So we go skip this part and go ahead, okay. The match criteria we know very well now, match and set criteria. Let's go for the examples, yeah. Yes, this is the example. See, now from A, I got two routes to ISP and ISPB. I say all packets coming by 10.1 should go via ISP. Eh? All packets coming by 10.2 should go via ISPB. See, a match IP address is used to specify match carrier for packet source address when using a standard access list. Okay, so an action access list can be used to specify match carrier based on the source and destination address as well as your protocol type, application, everything. You know, ACL, we should play standard and extended. So, match length, mean max again, like used to establish criteria based on the packet length between specified minimum and maximum values in bytes. Okay. So, set IP next stop. Remember, these all are BGP, correct? Next stop, set, and set, set, okay, this policy is routing. Set IP next stop. Like, 10.1 packet should go via this next stop. 10 dot should go via this next stop. So, we can define these things. Okay. So, there's so many things you can see in route map. You can do it, correct? So if more than one IP address is specified, the first IP address associated with the current IP connected interface is used to route the packets. Okay, so the first IP will be always preferred. Note, the routing table is only checked to make sure that the next stop is reachable, correct? Not for an explicit route to the packet destination address. We always see the next stop is reachable or not, but that is what your router does, correct? This time, we are also going to see how the packet goes to the destination. And set interface, like what is the next, next stop interface I can set. It provides a list of exit interfaces which the packet can be routed. If more than one interface is specified, the first interface again is found is to be used. How about the first is match, send it. So again, if there is no explicit route for destination address of the packet in the routing table, the send interface command has no effect on in the ignore. Okay. Again, if you have to you have to define, you have to define properly. If there is no route, then the packet is going to be ignored, correct? Again, default route, set IP, default next stop. So many things you can do. And set IP the default interface, outgoing interface should be this one. So you can do so many things with this set command, correct? Then set IP toss and precedence, these are all QS settings. Okay, QS. What kind of service should be given? Okay, now two examples. See here. here I got default routes. But to go outside, a router provides internet access for private enterprise network. Okay. I can do two ISPs. This router is advertising a default route into the enterprise. Okay. To avoid large internet routing table. But thus, when traffic from the enterprise network 10.1 and 10.2 reaches router A, it can go either to ISP or ISPB, correct? So, they say, see, PBR, is implemented on router A to shape or load balance traffic from router A to reach ISP. See, what it says, all traffic coming with a source IP of 10.1, okay, subnet is forwarded to ISP if there is not a specific route to a destination. And packet coming by 10.2 should go via ISPB. So, this is what this policy is routing is actually. So, if there is no default routes, all traffic not sourced from 10.1 10.2 will be wrong. Okay. So, the command, see here, simple. IP address, interface, that's okay. See. Route map equal access permitted. See, what is it? IP policy route map equal access. Now, what route map says? Match IP address 1. So, access list 1, permit 10.1. Set IP default next stop. That's it. That was, that's what you have to define. Same way. So, all packets coming via 10.1 will have an extra best 6.6. .6. And same way, equal access permit 2, match IP is 2, what access is 2 says, permit 10.2, and then you have an extra of 10.7, 176, 7.7, that's it. Isn't it simple? So, this should be the logic. Okay, packet 7, this source, we got this off, and this, this, this packet 7, this source, we got this off. Okay, and rest all permit all, and set default interface null 0, so that is all drop the packets, correct? Rest other side to drop it. So that's what. Okay, then you can use the command show your policy, shows this partial net equal access has been shown. So, you will show something like that, what you have done. Show route map, debug IP policy, you can see like policy map, route map equal access, item time. So, debug IP policy command output, the policy output indicates that 
Because the source IP address 10.1 matches line 10 of route map, equal access, a packet from 10.1 distant for this network has been received on positive net FA0 0. Getting? This is what it says. See, first, permitted. Source this, destination this, we are going to this interface. Okay? And the fourth, it says, has been policy ordered on serial interface to next of 6.6. .6. So, this is how we have to understand. One more example. Packets coming from B should reach C, but there are two routes again, correct? I want these guys to use a source and the destination should be this way, by this interface. Router A has a policy that packets with source address 192.1.1 on the other side of B should go out to router C interface 0.0.1, that is interface. So, simple again, see. And other, other packets should go via other route. So, again, see the command. Interface 0.0.0.2, this interface, IP address is okay. IP policy route map test. Now, what route map says? Match IP address 1. All access is permit 192.68 to router 1. So, all packets come from this source. What is the sec ne IP next stop? This one. That's it. Correct? So, all the other packets are forwarded normally. So, all packets coming from this 192.162.1 they come over here and when this router says, okay, source is 192.162.1, they will go at this one. Why next stop is what? This one, which I have set it. Okay? So, again, if I give the command show you policy, this is show route map is going on. This thing is showing on, working. Then again, debug. See, file is routed normally by destination. See. It shows the packet from source. When the packet comes from this source, 161.1, this time for this network was received on the interface serial 002. Can you see here? Okay, serial 002 is received and it was rejected by the policy on the interface. See, policy map. Can you see normal uh, policy rejected, normal forwarding. Why? Because I have defined source this one. If the packet comes from this source, it should be go on normal one, correct? So, as per our policy, the packet is not matching. So, this packet is routed normally. Okay, then if you see the other one, source address, what is this? 192 2.1. Destination is 1.1. Policy match, yes, and IP route map test item 10 permitted. I set the next stop to this one. Getting? That is that's the difference. So we'll see this particularly on tomorrow, okay, on Friday. So these packets are going by this way. Okay. So this is what you can do, and this is what already approach to IP using configuration PBR, policy based routing. Same thing. But again, it's not very fun, but it's okay. Like see, are you going to see route map IPS right? Route map test. Set IP next stop, verify availability again. So it's a you know, like longer way of doing it. Okay, so I will say here again, it said IP next stop, verify availability. So to configure policy routing to via this way, that the next stop should be our route map with the CDP neighbor before policy routing is to the next stop. Set IP next stop and verify availability. It's, it's available and is the next stop you to go via this route. But again, you know, no more goes with so much complex thing, right? We just keep it try to keep it simple by using mixing IP SLN policy based routing. Okay. So now let me show you one more example. Give me one sec. I think I didn't remember if I should 